iProcess is an app that allows you to charge credit cards through your gateway account with an iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch. To get up and running with iProcess, go to the App Store on your iOS device and search for iProcess. It will be the first result and is a free app, so you can just tap on the Get or Cloud icon to download the app. Once the app is installed, you can open it and you will be asked to give the device a name. The name can be whatever you want and will be displayed in your transaction reports to help you know what phone ran a particular transaction in the case that you are using multiple devices. Next, you'll be asked to configure the app. Tap Configure Now to be taken to a page asking for your gateway username and password. You must enter the username and password fields, and these will be the same username and password that you created when you received your welcome email to the gateway. Everything else on this page is optional, but you can change whether you want customer receipt emails to be sent automatically upon a successful sale, as well as adding your business address details here at the bottom. When you're ready, tap Save. We'll check to make sure your username and password are correct, and then send you back to the app's settings screen. At this point, you're ready to charge. Tap Done to go back to the main menu, and then tap Sale to start processing your first sale. The app will request location access, and you can choose to allow this or not. If you allow location access, this will give you the option to include a map on your receipts you send to customers from the app. We'll only ask this the first time you start the sale, and we'll save your selection going forward. Now, simply enter an amount, enter the card number, the expiration date, and then whatever additional fields you would like. We offer the CVV and postal code up at the top, any merchant-defined fields you have active on your account, order details, and then the cardholder details. Once you've entered everything you'd like, you can tap Process. This is where you would hand over your device to the customer so they can sign with their finger, and they can approve or cancel the transaction. Additionally, if they would like, they can add a tip, we include some percentages, and they can also key in an amount. This will be added on top of the total that you have charged them. In this case, we'll do no tip, so we'll just hit approve. It gives the customer a message asking them to return the device to the merchant. Now that you have the phone back, we'll ask ready to charge. We'll confirm the total amount. If you hit cancel, nothing will be charged and the customer will not see anything on their credit card statement. If you hit OK, we'll process and display the response. In this case, the transaction was approved, and then you have a couple actions. You can view the receipt, you can start a new sale immediately, or you can just hit done. Hitting view receipt takes you to an image of the receipt for the transaction you just ran. If you would like to send this to the customer, you can hit the share button in the top right, and we give you the option to void the transaction, to refund it, or to email. When I hit email, it brings up the mail app on my phone, where I can enter an email address, choose which account I want to send from from my phone, and when I'm ready, hit send. If you are using a card reader, you can plug it in at any point when the app is open, and you'll receive this pop-up that says iProcess would like to access the microphone. You want to make sure you say OK to this, because if you do not allow, it will not allow data to be transferred from the card reader to your phone, in which case the card reader will not work. Hit OK, and then go to the settings of iProcess. You need to go to card reader devices to tell us which card reader you're using, on this page, we'll show pictures of the three card readers that iProcess supports, and you can tap on the one that you are using. I have selected my reader, so now I can go back to my settings and run a new sale. After you've enabled microphone access and the reader is plugged in, you want to make sure that you turn up your headphone volume all the way. In order to improve long-term battery life, the card reader uses the headphone volume to partially power itself. So turn up the volume all the way. You should see a little pop-up on your screen that says headphones. Turn it all the way up and then swipe a card. You can choose to either tap the sale icon and then swipe a card, or swipe from the main menu. Either way, when the card is swiped, it will be detected by the app and bring you to the sale page with the credit card information filled out. We are able to pull the credit card number, the expiration date, and the customer's name from the card. Everything else, including address information or merchant-defined fields, would still have to be filled out if you are collecting that. You, of course, have to enter an amount and hit process. The rest will be exactly the same as before. You can run the charge, it'll process, and the transaction was approved. Again, you can view the receipt, start a new transaction, or just hit done to go back to the main menu. From the main menu, you can hit sale to run a transaction against your customer. If credits are enabled on your account, you can hit the red credit icon in order to give a credit to your customer. The history option shows any test transactions that you have run in the past, including name information, truncated card information, as well as the amounts and when they were run. Tapping into one will bring you to the receipt. From the receipt page, you can hit the icon in the top right of the screen, which will allow you to void, refund, or email this receipt.
If you want to run a refund or a void from your iProcess app, you can do that by going to History, tapping into the transaction that you would like to change, hit the button in the top right, and in this case, I'll choose Void. We'll confirm it when you hit OK, Build Process, and there we go, Void Transaction Successful. If I want to run a refund, I can also do that. I tap into the transaction, I hit the icon in the top right, and hit Refund. We will autofill the full amount, so you can process a refund for that amount. However, you can also do a partial refund. If we want to do a $2 refund for this customer, I can key in $2, hit Process, and there we go, the transaction was refunded. All of this is recorded in my history. I can see a void and the $2 refund right there. These will also show up in my gateway control panel, so I can access them in my standard reporting. Going into settings, you can see what gateway accounts are logged into the app. We have the primary account, where we have the username and password, as well as any email receipt settings or receipt details that I've included. This is also where I can delete the account at the bottom. I can also add an account right below that. If I want to have multiple gateways signed into this account, I can. The next section is application settings. The password here, if I enable a password, this will prompt me to enter this password every single time that I open the iProcess app. This is not your gateway password and can be whatever you would like it to be. Essentially, this will prevent anyone who does not know this password from accessing your iProcess and running transactions on your device. iProcess has a few sound effects that play if your sound is on. They are on by default, but you can turn them off if you would like. If you enable New Sale on Launch, every time you open iProcess, it'll take you directly to the Sale screen, so you don't have to tap the green Sale icon every time you open the app. Card Reader Devices is where you tell us what card reader you're using, if any. Device nickname is what this device will show up in your transaction reports as being processed from. You set this up when you first installed iProcess, but you can go in and edit it at any time. Below that are some transaction settings. Location maps are for the emails that you send from iProcess. If this is enabled, we will show a map displaying where the transaction took place. Please note that you must have location access enabled for iProcess for this to work, otherwise we cannot tell what location the transaction was done from. Enable Signature changes whether you want to show the customer's signature page. Enable Tip button will decide on that signature page whether the customer should have the option to give a tip. These permissions are tied together and requires the signature, so if you turn off signature, it also turns off the tip because we can't display the tip without showing the signature page. We can also enable Customer Vault. If you enable this and go back to your sale page, we'll ask you when you run a sale, do you want to just charge or do you want to store the card and charge? If you hit store the card in charge, you can enter the card information. You can also swipe it in if you have a card reader. So you can just add it to your customer vault in your gateway, or you can charge them and add to the vault. Please note, if the customer vault is not active on your gateway, you will not be able to use this feature. Finally, we have some tax settings. It's off by default, but if you enable tax and hit default tax rate, you can tell us what the tax rate is. We'll do 9% and hit save. Now, when I run a new sale, I'll charge, and when I do a $10 sale, I can see 90 cents tax has been added, which is 9%, and the total is $10.90. So when I go to process, I can see a total of $10.90 was charged, and the receipt notates the tax amount. Finally, at the bottom, there's a help section where we have some details for how to set up your gateway account, how to process a sale, refund, void, and view your transaction history.